Hello everyone, my name is Tang Chen. I'm from EDS Tech. And this is my friend Chen Rui. He's from Huawei. Uh, today we are going to share with you something about two client interface projects in OpenStack. Uh, OpenStack Client and OpenStack SDK. Uh, here is the agenda today. Uh, as you know, if you want to access to uh, OpenStack, you, you have to access to, to some client first. Uh, each project in OpenStack provides its own client. Um, so uh, first, we, uh, I want to say something about the common problems existing in these clients. And then I, I, and then I would give an overall introduction to OpenStack client and SDK. And in this section, we will know how uh, OSC and SDK could solve these problems. And then some detail about OSC and SDK. And uh, after that, uh, Chen Rui will share with you some user experience of OpenStack client. And at last, some future works. OK. Uh, so first, the problems in the existing, open, in the existing clients. Uh, you know, each, so each project in OpenStack have its own client. And there are some problems. For example, there are duplicated func functionality in these clients. Uh, you can see uh, Nova client and uh, Glance client, both, both of them have image-related commands. If you type help, you can see, you can see the exact, the, exact the, the same output there. They are, they are the same commands, but the code resides in different projects. Another problem is naming conflict. Uh, the most famous one is flavor. Uh, flavor, both, uh, flavor in, no, in Nova client, flavor means the flavor for a virtual machine. But in Neutron, it means uh, the flavor of a Neutron service, of a network service. You, they are both named flavor, but they are actually different things. So that is also a problem. It often confused users. And some other problems, they are very difficult to use. For example, uh, terms like Nova, Neutron, it means nothing to users. Uh, instead, compute, network, they are much more easier to understand and remember. And use a lot of clients makes debug and upgrade more and more difficult because you have to install individual client packages. And at last, too much redundant code, right? So uh, I will introduce you OpenStack Client and OpenStack SDK. They are known as unified OpenStack Common Line Client and SDK. Now, before we talk deeply into OSC and SDK, let's make it clear that what is actually a client. You can simply say that a client provides two types of user, interface, user interfaces. A command line interface for end users, like operators and system administrators, and API for application developers, like the ones in the red box. And the command line should be based on the API, of course. So first, OpenStack Client, which is also known as OSC. It is a command line client for OpenStack that brings all commands together in a single interactive share with uniform command structure. And it also provides a plugin framework for other clients to integrate their commands into OSC. It provides a variety of output formatters for example, the table, which is uh, human-readable, and JSON could be handled by a lot of libraries. And uh, even pure strings, which is for uh, Linux shared commands, such as grip. For now, uh, only Keystone has, uh, has deprecated his 
uh, command line client and uh, use OpenStack client as its offshore command line. Uh, Neutron is now transitioning to o OSC, and the work and half of the work has been done. And more than 16 plugins have been supported now. And OpenStack SDK, it is the collection of libraries for building applications to work with OpenStack. Uh, it aims to provide a consistent and complete set of interactions with all OpenStack services, along with complete documentation and examples. It uses uh, application developer friendly language in description, in description, just like I said just now, uh, compute instead of NOAA. So this is SDK. Now let's take an example to see what's the difference between use existing clients and uh, uh, OSC or SDK. Uh, this is a graph uh, when we uh, when we create a bare metal node. Uh, if we have a compute node using uh, using the ironic driver, uh, when user type NOA boot, it will start a bare metal node. It first, of course, call NOA client and the NOAA client called NOAA API. The NOAA service, the computer service, have, has to communicate with Neutron services for some, net, for some network information and also ironic services to create the real bare metal node. So uh, NOAA's uh, computer service, uh, of course, it will call Neutron client an ironic client, and finally, a bare metal node is created. You can see that a lot of core, a lot of cores in there, and the, and it it is uh, very difficult to debug. So, uh, if we use OSC and SDK, it will be quite simple. Uh, the the command line uh, OSC provides command line to users, and SDK provides API to. Uh, Cloud APPs. You you can also see OSC as a as an application in OpenStack. So when we type command in OpenStack client, it call directly uh, SDK APIs and all the all the other services uh, communi communicate with each other through OpenStack SDK. It's much simpler than the one before. Now let's see some detail about uh, OpenStack client. First, I would like to talk about three uh, helper modules in OpenStack client. The first one is Cliff. Cliff is Cliff contains uh, all the base classes for OpenStack client command line. It has built it has built in uh, output formatters. Uh, and in, and impl and impl implemented uh, an interactive shell wrapper. Another one is uh, argpass. It is used to pass the command line options. And OSC lib, which provides a lot of other functionalities like authentications, uh, tra translation support, loggers, and exceptions. And the architecture of OpenStack client consists of two types of command line. Uh, first, the OpenStack client plans to implement six core API commands in itself. They are uh, Keystone, Nova, Neutron, Cinder, Guns, and Swift. And all the other modules should implement their command line as a plugin to OpenStack client. So this is the architecture. OK. So how to add a command to OpenStack client? Uh, two steps. Uh, first, you should implement a new class for the command. Um, in this class, two uh, basic methods should be implemented. implemented. 
get parser, which is used to pass a command option and take action, which is the main logic of your command line. And after that, you should map your entry point to the class. Uh, this is done in uh, setup config file. And you write something like this, and Python setup tools will handle the rest work for you. And you can then type, then you re reinstall your uh, code, and then you can just type a command. For example, server create uh, in your terminal and the code you write will be wrong. And how to add a plugin in OpenStack Client? It's a little more complicated, but still very simple. A plugin is discovered by enumerating the entry points found under uh, extension direct directory. So you should first add your uh, plugin uh, into this directory. This is also done in setup config file. Then you should implement a plugin client. The plugin client uh, is the entry point of your plugin, of all the commands in your plugin. Two methods should be implemented. implemented. Uh, make client, uh, which will return the client object, and uh, build option parser, which is used to build some global options for your commands. And after that, uh, they are, uh, it's the same as the one before. Uh, you should implement a class, a command class, with get parser and take action. And then map your entry point to your class. So that's the OpenStack client. And OpenStack SDK. OpenStack SDK is actually a two-level architecture, uh, the resource core level and the proxy core level. Mm, each resource in OpenStack should be, uh, should be implemented in OpenStack SDK as a class. This is called the resource class. And the resource class will uh, call the REST API directory. And, and uh, it will encapsulate the resource operations into resource core. Maybe uh, you may do multiple REST API calls to finish one single uh, resource call. And above that, uh, a proxy should be implemented. And uh, the proxy provides APIs for uh, SDK users uh, for cloud applications and and the proxy uh, and you can do a multiple resource calls to finish one proxy call that and all the cloud app the cloud applications should call uh, should call prox proxy call uh, but not the resource call so uh, how to use sdk in your application development um, First, you should uh, create a connection object. Uh, it's a built-in uh, class object in OpenStack SDK, uh, which handles uh, the uh, username, password, your project region, something like that, the, the authentication things. And with this connection object, you can uh, access to all the proxies you have implemented. Uh, for example, uh, now uh, we have compute, network, uh, image, and so on. Uh, the name is very easy to understand and remember. For example, when you want to access to Nova services, you just, uh, you just obtain the compute proxy with uh, connection.compute, then you get it. And then you can Call the, uh, call the proxy call as you like. For example, if you want to list up all the servers, you can simply call uh, compute proxy dot servers, and all the servers will be obtained. And you can also uh, delete a network. You obtain the network proxy and call the delete network uh, proxy call. 
that's it. And you can find all the supported proxy in this page. That is the SDK. And next, uh, I would invite Chen Rui to share with you some user experience of OpenStack client. OK. Thanks to Tang Chen's sharing. I'm Chen Rui, a contributor of the OpenStack client project. I now work for Huawei. You know, OpenStack client has a lot of excellent characteristics. For example, consistent command structure, switching between clothes, and the interactive mode, operation log, and so on. What I want to highlight discussed at here is consistent command structure that impact the user experience directly. OpenStack client has a consistent and predictable format for all of his commands. Command takes the form. OpenStack, optional global options, object one, action, object two, and uh, optional command structures. It's expressed as take object one and perform action using object two to it. Uh, and the rule is applied for the all OpenStack client command. If we use the interactive mode that makes the timing laser, we only to need to input the object one and the related action. The second object is, is optional according to the command requirements. Uh, and uh, the con consistent and the predictable command structure make it easier for user to remain the command. For example, server add volume, network list, volume list, and uh, volume create. Uh, you can find uh, the input is different in each command, but the command structure is fixed. Bear in mind the rule, you can try anything you want in the OpenStack client. For example, image list, stamp create, and so on. And a good user interface don't need the menu. In the OpenStack, all the object name uh, compose the unicode name. Uh, for example, include the call services, Nova, Neutron, Sender, Keystone, Glance, and Swift, and the other big tongue services like Hit, Silometer, Ironic, and so on. You know, we always use the different word to describe the one action. For example, create instance, launch instance, boot instance, and run instance. In the OpenStack client, we define the similar operation to a unicode name, like create delete, list, show, add, remove, and some special action. For example, restore, resume, uh, and so on. So in OpenStack client, you will have no feeling that you are jumping from one object to other projects. OpenStack client handles the details and the difference. OK, let's do some operation to express the difference. Imagine a scenario, how to create the server with the bootable volume in CLI. The following step we have to execute in the CLI. Choose the image and create the volume with the specified image. Choose the flavor, choose the network, and create the server with these options. OK, let me try to use the project specific CLI. First, I need an image, so I have to include glance image list. But if I need some details of uh, image, the wearables option is required. And then create the volume with the specified image. Glance create add the image option. Then choose the flavor. Uh, let me think, uh, which project in all the flavor? OK. It's now a flavor list, uh, and I need the intro specs option to show the detail of flavor. The first step, 
choose the network. It's neutron net list. Actually, I don't know why it's net, uh, not a network. But uh, what, uh, whatever. Actually, finally, we create the server with these options. Now I boot, boot ball volume, nick and flavor. In this process, you can find something. First, we must switch from the target object name to the project name. Uh, image, glance, and uh, volume, sender, and the network neutral. Uh, second, the options is inconsistent in the different commands. For example, variables and uh, the extra specs option are both showing the details of object, but they have different name. Uh, third, uh, the command is unpredictable. For example, sooner create, then now I create is right? No, it's now a boot. We have to try to can, can interact with the CLI uh, as the one have to switch in between the different <coughs> command structure and the different output formatting capability and require a deep knowledge about uh, which project uh, is responsibility for the different task. Then, let me try to use the OpenStack client. You can find, if I need the image, image list, volume, volume create, and flavor, flavor list. Uh, OpenStack client has uh, long options. It shows the, show the project, uh, the object details. If I want to check some details, long options is always available. OpenStack client provide a more natural user experience, like talking directly and efficiently. Reduce the complexity of the OpenStack interaction. Uh, next part, let me try, let me see the future works of OpenStack client and SDK. Uh, next step, we propose to neutron sender guns clients transition to the OpenStack based on SDK and uh, Swift command and the API application in SDK and the amount of the API development for SDK. And uh, this is a reference about the OpenStack client and the uh, OpenStack SDK document. We have a detailed document for the contributors and the users. Okay, uh, we know OpenStack client and uh, OpenStack SDK push the UX of OpenStack to the new level. More and more users know it, but it's not enough. Like the Bruce Lee say, knowing is not enough, we must apply. Wearing is not enough, we must do. I hope the more and more the contributors and the users can join us to make it better. Let's do it. Okay, uh, any questions and concerns? Okay. Microphone. Okay. Oh, well, if your resource name has been used, you cannot use it anymore. Okay. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> okay. So, um, I guess my first question would be to follow up on it here. Um, how many of you are actually developing Python? Like, uh, okay, you will let me uh, How many of you are using different other languages? So, um, okay, better. <laughs> uh, so here's the question. Uh, even if 
Uh, sorry, can you uh, repeat sorry, your I, question? I didn't quite understand your <laughs> so, question. So my question to you, are you going to support something uh, different than Python? Because like, there aren't so many of us who develop cloud platforms, cloud apps using Python. You mean uh, client or uh, SDK in other programming languages? You, you mean documentation? Uh, yes, yes. Uh, so, so you mean the uh, SDK libraries in other programming languages, right? Yes. Uh, actually, there are, there are other uh, SDK in other uh, programming languages. Not, not, not in the, these two projects. These two are for Python only. Oh, I see the the rules, the the spec for. Yeah. Uh, well, I don't think there is a spec in such a detail now. Uh, there are uh, some uh, goals in in this uh, in these two pages. You can take a look at that, but not a documentation, not not a, a spec in detail. Uh, well, I think we can uh, discuss it more in the work session tomorrow. In, there, is, there is a OpenStack client work session tomorrow. And the, and the core team and PTL will be there. And we can write this question there again and see what we'll do. Thank you.
Any other question? Okay, please. So you want to do the SDK for automation? So we just create the import, go construct the client and create the object and then I can use it with the meta, lineage, everything that we need. Yeah, and, and you, you have to, of course, you have to install the service. The, the server side packages. Yes. 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 <coughs> so, no questions. Okay. Thank you okay. very much. Thank you for joining us.